Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about the first three problems from the latest Code Forces round 797. So I've solved the first five problems, but I don't want to make the video too long. So that's why I'm making the first three problems in this video. The next video will be having the rest two problems. So stay tuned on this channel and thank you for all the support and love on this channel. So stay tuned. Let us go to the first problem. The first problem is print a pedestal. So you are given that there are like you're given an integer n as you can see and this end denotes the number of blocks you have now you have to make a pedestal like this you have seen that when like there is a, a mod ceremony there's a pedestal like this like there's a top like you can say stand then, then first stand second position stand and the third position stand so they are in the order of the height so the f middle one is the top one the left one is just like the smaller than the top one and the third one is smaller than the second like the second and first one and you're given n value and you just have to make a pedestal like this and uh, you want to like have you don't can just put the first like every block in the first one like make it a very long and then like just put one and two in the accordingly that will make it uh, not too much but you just have to minimum like the height of the one should be as minimum as possible because it, it should not be like you can make it very large and like make the other two very small so that's the whole thing how you can do that so the overall idea among this problem is that you have to make three, let's say three lines, okay, or like three columns and you can first make them as close as possible. So you can make all the three columns of same length and then in the next step, what you can do that you have to now unevenize them so that the, that the middle one is the longest and the left one is just smaller than that and the third one is less smaller than that. So you just have to understand that what is the n that is given to you and according to that you can just change out the total length of the columns that's the overall uh, logic here let us draw it out so that it will become more clear to you so let's say that you have n equal to 6 so, okay so n equal to 6 means that you have to first define that if it is a modular of 3 if it is completely divided by 3 then what it means that you have like you can make 3 positions of the same size or let's say it is of size 9 so you have 9 blocks if you have 9 blocks and what you can do you can make let's say stand like this of 3 equal columns but that is not the case you have to make it the middle one larger than the second one second larger and third one uh, smaller than that so what you can do is that you can place this block to this position now it will be like this that this is of the same length this has gone one larger because this block is placed here and this got one smaller. So that is the one thing. Now if it is n mod 3 is equal to equal to 1 which means that they have same level up till a particular column and then one block is extra. So let's say that n mod 3 is let's say an example of 10. So 10 means that you have 9 blocks like this and one block extra. So what you can do in this scenario also. If you can put the like extra blocks on the middle like in the middle uh, let's say column now you have the middle column of the largest length let's say of length 4 okay and then these are of same length now you have to just have to make this like this is the smallest so what you can do is just take this block place it on the top so it will be of like this height this is of the same height and this has gone one smaller length Similarly for the like they have there are two blocks also then you have to like put one block here one block here and put the other block here so that is also fine. So these are the three scenarios for this nothing much complicated as of now. So I can take out of the summation part. So what I've done here is that I've taken like a value that is what is the column like the common column heights that is n divided by 3. Now if there is no extra block then which, which means that they all have the same column length. I will take the one from the last column subtracted by one and add it in the middle column so the a plus one okay. If there is one block that is extra what I'll do I will put it in the middle so a plus one and then similarly put one block from the last column put it in the middle also so a minus one a plus two and the first one is a. If there are two blocks extra I will put one block in the first column the second one in the second column and then I similarly again put the last block from the last column into the first like in the middle column and that is the overall scenario. So there are three scenarios of the three columns and that's the overall solution scenario part. Okay let us move on to the second problem and all the code will be in the description of this video. Okay edit egg edit decrement so it is also a very simple problem you are given two arrays you can read the problem statement I'll tell you in simple terms you are given two arrays and then what you have to do is that in each step you can take 
like you can decrease every element in the array by one and if it is zero it will not be decremented it cannot become negative but if it is non-zero all the elements will be decremented by one 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 and so on and you just have to tell that after doing some certain number of operations can you make a equal to b so you're subtracting out these ones from the a array and you want to make this a array equal to b that's the overall problem now what you can do is that your main objective in this whole problem is that if uh, let's say i have numbers like this two three five seven in the a array or like let's say that this is the b array and the a array is let's say seven okay then uh three or let's say we will add two in everything so if we add two in this it will become equal to four two in this five two in this seven two in this nine now if you subtract two like one time it will become like five like sorry three four then six and then eight and then similarly one more subtraction it will become equal to that but let's say that if this is um, okay if this is larger let's say if this is larger means that let's say that this is eight now if you want to bring eight to three then you have to subtract five now your main objective is to bring this like all numbers such that if you bring let's say if you bring subtract every number by two, obviously this will match, this will match, this will match, but this will not match. Okay. So what your main objective is to match the smallest one, because like the maximum number of operations you have to do is to match the largest one to the very smallest one, because that's the maximum number of operation you can do. Because in this scenario also, you can still decrement this value because if you decremented this by two, it will become six, but you can still keep on decremented such that the, this one should match because your main objective is to match the one with the maximum difference. And then after all this operation, can this both the arrays become same? Okay, so that's the overall logic here. Nothing much complicated. You, you just have to do a brute force way. Keep on decrementing the A array such that the like the smallest difference between them is filled. And then you just have to match the two arrays whether they become equal or not. So I'll take it on to code part. Don't worry. It will become more, more clear to you after that. So what we have done here is, let it, let it be open. Yeah. So we have taken the array input of two arrays and then what we'll do, this is the answer. So answer will tell me what is the maximum difference between A to B. So if I'm going from, let's say A to five, so how many difference it will be. So I will subtracting out the difference and I will be finding a difference. Maybe it can also happen that there is the A array is way smaller than B array. So which means that the array of A is, let's say one, 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 and the B array is five, five, five. Now, because I want to subtract from A to become B, I cannot go beyond because if I subtract numbers from A, it will become like one zero, like it can go down, but B is larger. I cannot go up and thus that is like not the scenario. So I cannot go less. So if I do A minus B, it will be, it will be a negative number, which means that I will have to subtract a negative number that is not feasible. So I will be doing a maximum with zero so that it will not become less than zero. And then whatever the number of operations I will get, I will subtract that number of value from A of I until it becomes zero or we can keep on subtracting that value. Okay. Now after doing this, I have two arrays like A have done all the operations. I have A. I just have to match that whether A is equal to B after this operation, after doing this number of operations. If it is yes, the answer is yes. Else if any number doesn't match, the answer is no. That's the whole thing. Okay. Let us move on to the third problem. The third problem is, hmm. Okay, yeah. So the other problem is restoring the duration of task. So you are given actually that you have like Polycarp has completed n successive tasks. So there are n successive tasks Polycarp like has covered and you are given that there is a start time of the task that is SI. There's an end time of a task that is FI and there is a certain duration for which the task is done. Now you might be thinking, okay, if I have a start time, I have an end time, the duration is between them. No, there's a catch here. The catch is written in this part. So what it is actually done here is that the start time is not just after the end time of the first task. So let's say that there's some task, let's say I'm going a task from one hour to five hour, but the next time task occurs at the three hour. So the task occurs at the three hours, but I will not start doing this task until my first task is completed. I hope you get the point. So I will only start doing my task after the first task is completed that is after the fifth hour. So that's the whole thing here that uh, as soon as the first task came, the Polycarp start immediately like doing their task. Uh, if the new task arrive, Polycarp will put the next task in the queue that I will do it next. The order will remain the same, but 
uh, like the order should not be changed like i cannot be picking up any other task but the order remains same but i will be only picking up the task after the first like the task i'm currently working on is finished so when polika finished the executing task it will pick the next task okay so what is the duration of each task now let's say that let's take one example it will become clear to you for if you have any ambiguity in any problem then go to the example it will become more clear to you so what you can see here is that okay this is the start time and this is the end time of every task so i'll do the first task from 0 to 2 so how many time how much task time i have taken from 0 to 2 i have taken 2 hours okay then the next task come at 3 so i will keep on working from 3 till 10 for the second task so how much time i have taken 7 but at time 7 another task came but i am doing this task from 3 to 7 so i will not do this until the task hit 10 when the task hit 10 i will start doing this task but but i will finish doing this task at time equal to 11 so how much eventually i have done this work for only one hour because 10 to 11 so that's the overall thing what you have to do is that the first task you have to you will be doing completely so from this to this and the next task is that you just have to see that if this value like the next like the value at which it is started if it is greater than the end time then i will completely doing this task else what i will be doing is that i will be doing this task after this completion that is i will be doing at 10 so 10 minus 11 pretty much simple. nothing much complicated here so you just have to do this operation and just have to do that so i'll show you the good part what you have to do is that take the input of all the start and end time and then the first task is like the first complete task you have to do that is b0 to the end that is end minus start and on the second task that is from index one i'll keep on doing that and the iteration will be that for the i task like i will finish at bi but i will start at either ai or the b of i minus one like whatever is maximum like whatever is closest either i start from the start time of this particular task that is a of i or else if that is smaller but that but the previous task ended later i will take out the b of i minus one that is the end task like the end time of the previous task so whatever is the maximum i will take that because that's the closest time i will finish this work and then i'll subtract it from the end time of this current task and i will get the duration of the task i have performed the it task for and that's the overall logic for the third problem as well so these are the solution and the code part for the th three problems for this video stay tuned for the next two videos like two problems as well so thank you for watching this video till then I will see you next one. Delicate coding and bye.